Revelation chapter 22. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. We're in the holy city now. The New Jerusalem, space city, come down from God out of heaven to a new earth the capital city of the world to come, kingdom come. Our capital, from which we will rule the world. And in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. There is a river which flows through the city of God. This beautiful new Jerusalem, this space city from outer space, the capital city, the place that Jesus has gone to prepare for you and me, where there are many mansions in his Father's house for us. It's on its way here now, coming in from outer space. And through the city flows this beautiful river, and on each side of the river are these beautiful trees called the trees of life. And they bear fruit. Twelve kinds of fruit on one tree. Think of that. A different kind of fruit every month. That's quite a fruit tree, huh, David? Yeah. Isn't that a beautiful fruit tree? Mm -hmm. We've been talking about Eden's fruits and so on. But uh, that's more fruit than we ever found on one tree in the Garden of Eden, right? Mm -hmm. So that's really unusual, huh? Uh, you like to see that? Yeah. Well, you will because you're saved and you're going to be in the holy city when the time comes, praise the Lord. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Outside the holy city, on the surface of the renewed earth, whose surface and atmosphere had been destroyed in the last great war of Gog and Magog, and all of whose wicked had been burned up and killed, who were then judged in the great white throne judgment of God. Now we're on the renewed surface of the earth at the beautiful new heavenly city. New heaven, new earth. And through it flows this beautiful river of life, flanked by the trees of life, which have twelve fruits, a different one every month, and leaves that are able to heal the nations outside of the city. For outside of the city, on this globe, these nations will still be in existence. There will still be nations. There will be Russia and China that you see there, North America, United States and Canada, Europe, and so on. Still be nations outside of the city. And we will have leaves from the tree of life for their healing. Apparently they're still going to need help and still need healing. Still need salvation and we will have the answer to their problems. They will not be allowed inside of the holy city, the beautiful city, Zion, the new Jerusalem, the bride of Christ, space city, the capital of the kingdom of God to come. But they will be allowed upon the surface of the earth in a beautiful new earth where there will be no more sea. Look at how much of the earth is sea. And there will be no more sea. No more Pacific. No more Atlantic. No more Indian Ocean. No more Pacific Ocean. No more sea. All the land. Think of that. And even the United States and these nations and Europe will still be there. Still be there. But they'll need healing, and we will have the answers to their problems in the leaves of the tree of life for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, the curse, the result of sin, no more. But the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, 
And they need no candle, neither light of the sun. That is, in the city. We're not talking about outside on the surface of the earth now. The surface of the earth outside, the planetary ball, earth, will still have sun, moon, stars, day and night, seasons and so on. But in the city, there'll be no need of sun or moon or stars or candle. There'll be no night there because it'll be eternally lighted forever. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, beautifully lighted. And you'll be able to see that city, think of it, from as far as 4,000 miles away. Beautifully lighted city of God. Beautifully golden light all night long when it's night upon the earth. The inhabitants of the earth will be able to look up and view that beautiful city and know that God is there. That God now lives here with man. He's come down out of heaven to make his dwelling place with man. And that's his beautiful city, his capital city. Even if you're not one of the denizens or one of the citizens of the city living inside the city, you'll be able to look up from the surface of the earth and be thankful that you're even there at all even outside the city, unsaved. One of those on probation. One of those still learning to love the Lord. But you can look up at night and see that beautiful city. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. Just think, from even 4,000 miles away, you'll be able to see it. Even if it was clear across the ocean or over New York, you could see it from London and Paris and even almost from Rome. Think of that. Isn't that amazing? And there shall be no more curse, and so on. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. No need of candle, light of sun, so on. And they shall reign forever and ever. Who shall reign? You and me. We, the saints of God. All the Christians who love Jesus. All are saints, sanctified by his blood. Purified, set apart to serve the Lord. And he said unto me, These things are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servant the things which must shortly be done. This person speaking to St. John said these things to him. Then Jesus speaks, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Quickly? What do you mean? John got this revelation 2,000 years ago, and Jesus isn't here yet. Well, Jesus didn't say he was coming soon. He said he was going to come quickly when he came. He didn't say he was going to come soon. He said he's going to come quickly. In other words, when he comes, he's going to come real quick and in a hurry, real fast. But he didn't say I'm coming soon, because it's been 2,000 years since then. He hasn't come yet. And I, John, saw these things, the eighth verse, and I heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. Then saith he, he thought it was an angel. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren, the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. He said, don't worship me. I'm one of the prophets. One of your brethren is a prophet. He didn't say which prophet he was. He could have been any one of the major prophets, minor prophets. Moses, Daniel, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, or uh, prophets since the days of the Lord. He didn't say which one. He just says, I'm just another prophet like you. I'm one of your fellow servants. I'm one of the, the human beings of the saints. A prophet like you, but so don't worship me. I'm not even an angel, but worship the Lord. And he saith unto me, Seal not the things of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. We found out that the book of Revelation began when? When did the revelations begin? In whose time? Class? 
John's time. Here's a little lad over here that had the right answer. The sayings of this book, the predictions and prophecies of this book began right then in John's day. That's why he says the time is at hand. And this book reviews the whole history of the world prophetically from the days of John to the very end. In fact, right on into the heaven as we see tonight. Praise the Lord. He says, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still, and he that is holy, let him be holy still. That sort of shows you how God divides uh, classes of this world. There seem to be two, uncla- two classes of the unsaved or the wicked, uh, classified into those who are unjust, are unmerciful, unloving, and those who are just plain dirty, filthy, sickening, vile, but both unsaved and both filthy and vile and and not God's children. Then he has a couple of classes there of the just, the righteous, and the holy. Some people who are righteous and like the church people live very good lives and try to do what was right. And then the holy, those who are holy and totally dedicated to the Lord and His service set apart completely, beautifully clean in God's sight, pure and holy in their love for the Lord, serving the Lord day and night, the holy. God has a very, it's not a classless society, it's a very classy society. And He has all kinds of different classes and stages of development and stages of punishment and stages of reward and all kinds of different classes in God's kingdom, in his kingdom come. It's not just one great class. We're not all the children of God. As Jesus said, some of you are of your father the devil. We don't preach the fatherhood of God, brotherhood of man, because not all men are of their father God. God is not the father of all men. He's only the father of those who love him and receive his son Jesus. The others are of their father the devil. So we don't believe in that bullshit about the fatherhood of God of all, the brotherhood of all men. That's not so. We are not the brothers of the children of Satan. We are not the brothers of the sons and daughters of the devil. We are only the brothers of the brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ, the children of God. This whole world is divided very distinctly into two kinds of people, those who are the children of God through Jesus Christ, his Son, and those who are the children of the devil through the Antichrist, his Son. Verse, and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Now, he didn't say soon, but he said quickly. He's going to come very suddenly when he comes. He's just warning them, even 2,000 years in advance, that when he finally comes, he's going to come very quickly. He says that about three times in this passage. Not that he's coming soon, but that he's going to come very quickly. He does say that the events talked about in this book are at hand, starting right now, he says. And this book covers the whole period from John to the end, even to heaven. My reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. Everybody will be rewarded at the judgment of Jesus Christ, at the throne of Christ. Every saved Christian will be rewarded according to his works. When Jesus comes, The judgment of the wicked does not come until a thousand years later when all the wicked are dead and destroyed and then raised to meet God at the great white judgment seat described in the 20th chapter, if you want to read it. But we who are raised, resurrected and raised in rapture to be with the Lord at the end of the tribulation, we get our rewards right away up in heaven at the marriage supper of the Lamb. There's a great feast and a great marriage supper, a great ceremony. And God passes out the gifts. He passes out the presents, the rewards, to all of those who love the Lord. Then wonderful, that's going to be better than Christmas, you know. 
when Jesus passes out the presents to all the children who've been good are going to get good big presents and all the children if they are really children they love the Lord but they were naughty and sometimes disobedient they're not going to get very much are they I don't think so they're going to be ashamed aren't they when they don't get much of a reward because they were naughty children 13th verse, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Jesus is speaking again. Alpha and Omega, the first and the last letters of the Greek alphabet, meaning the beginning and the end. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. All those who do the commandments of Jesus Christ can eat of that tree of life, that grows on both sides of the river of life, that flows right through the city like a big park. It's going to be very beautiful. The city is going to be very, very beautiful. I'm going to tell you more about it in a few minutes. It's going to be like a beautiful, beautiful park in some places. And there in the, the lower level where the river flows right through the city, there's going to be these beautiful trees growing on both sides. Of fruit trees with 12 different kinds of fruits, one a different kind every month. Think of that. And leaves that will be able to heal the people outside the city that are still sin-sick and sick of their disobediences and their, their rebellion against God. We're going to be able to take those leaves outside. We're still going to be witnesses. Think of that. We're still going to be witnesses for the Lord and be able to take those leaves outside the city and to heal the nations outside. But we who live in the city who are saved, we're saved and the only saved ones. And we have a right to the tree of life to drink of those beautiful waters that keep us living forever so we can help those people outside. Isn't that good? Would you like to do that? Wouldn't you like to keep on witnessing to take little leaves of life out to the nations like little leaflets? Kind of reminds you of those little leaflets we take out to the people in the world, huh? We're still going to be taking out leaflets. Think of that. Out to the nations to heal them. Leaflets. Leaves from the tree of life. That's what we're really doing now. We're taking leaves from the tree of life right now. We're taking leaves right out of the tree of life here, and we're taking them out to heal the nations now, aren't we, David? We're taking them out and giving them to the people outside of the family and outside of the kingdom of God, outside of kingdom come, outside of the saved and the church. We're giving them out to the people out on the streets, right? Outside of the city of the family, outside of the city of the church, Outside in the streets and the sidewalks and the byways and highways, all over the world, we're giving them little leaflets from the tree of life, aren't we, huh? Little leaves and leaflets from the tree of life? We're giving them little leaves and leaflets. Already we're giving them leaves from the tree of life that they might be healed. Isn't that wonderful? And we're going to still be witnessing and giving out leaflets. How about that? Litnessing. Leaflets. Little leaves from the tree of life to heal the nations. Praise God. But only we have the right to enter into the city because we are citizens of the city. We are the saved. And only the nations of the saved can walk there. And he says so. Right here, we read it in the last chapter. For outside, for without, outside are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. That's terrible, huh? Those awful, horrible people are going to be outside the city. Outside the city. That's why they need our help. They need us to go out and heal them with the leaflets, the little leaves of the tree of life, outside the city. They'll still be out there like they are today. We still have to go out there and witness to them and apply the leaflets of God's Word, the tree of life, and to heal them of their sins. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? That we'll have some work to do, still have some work to do? We won't just be sitting around uh, floating on clouds, fiddling with the harps. That's some stupid cartoonist idea. Some guy who doesn't know about what's going to happen, really because we're going to be very busy going in and picking leaves off of the tree of life 
nice little leaflets like this one we handed out for many years. Here's a little leaf from the Tree of Life right there. And we take it out and we'll give it to the people outside like this and say, hey, here, this will heal you if you just take it and rub it into your heart. Rub it into your heart, David. Rub it into your heart. That's right. Rub it into your heart. It'll heal your heart and make you well again. Isn't that wonderful? We'll still be giving out little leaf leaflets from the tree of life. How about that?